Hi, I'm Jeffrey. Welcome back to Night Falls. Come, settle in for tonight's calming meditation and soothing bedtime story. As always, don't worry if you fall asleep before the end. You can drift off whenever you're ready. Join me beside the fire tonight as we follow Robin, a young boy who loses himself in the pages of a magic book and is transported to a whole new world. I've always found stories to be the most wonderful escape. From the bedtime stories I was told as a child to the stories I shared with you around the fire. A tale well told has always provided me with an escape from the bustle and busyness of daily life. Before we begin to explore the unknown world just waiting for Robin beneath the cover of a book, let's take a moment to relax. Come to a comfortable position and allow your eyes to gently drift closed. Take a moment to observe your breath as it drifts in through your nose and out through your mouth. Try not to interrupt the natural processes that sustain you. Just allow yourself a moment to enjoy the things you do each day without even having to think. Enjoy the breath that flows in and out of your lungs and be grateful for the lungs that expand to welcome that fresh air. Give thanks to your beating heart and the life source that it pumps around your body without you even noticing. Thank the thoughts that take you to new places and help you explore. And be grateful for the gut instinct settled deep inside of you it never fails to guide you or keep you safe it's really rather remarkable that your body does all of those things every single second of every single day so take a moment to be grateful for your body and being and allow them a moment of stillness to truly relax into. Breathing in deeply, gather up any physical or emotional tension lingering within you, and exhale, letting go of any guilt over the things you feel you ought to have gotten done today. Inhaling, remind yourself that your body already does so much you're already doing so much. Exhaling, release that inner burden on a long, lazy sigh of relief. Now, if you're feeling relaxed, Robin's story can begin. Robin had always been an inquisitive young boy. From a young age, he had stuck his head in history books and delighted in observing the world around him. His father had often commented on how he expected him to grow up to be a scientist or historian of some kind, just like him. So it was a surprise to all of them when Robin started working in the mysterious ancient book hold with the renowned Dr. Wenzel. Dr. Wenzel was a wise old grey mouse who stood as tall as Robin and wore a long robe and held a staff in one hand to help him walk. Some folk reckoned that he was over a hundred years old but nobody knew for sure. Now, you see, in this world animals and humans live alongside each other 
They all speak the same language. And they all live in harmony with one another. It is a world where mice can be doctors, and owls can be teachers. Antelope can be chefs, and the lions can be gardeners. Anybody can be anything they want to be. If they're useful, of course. When children turn ten years old, they're assigned a job within society to help protect and support their world. Everybody believes in the good of the whole, above the good of the individual. On Robin's tenth birthday, he was assigned a job working with Dr. Wenzel in the book hold. Their purpose was simple to protect and safely store away printed literature. Now, at 14 years old, Robin had been working alongside Dr. Wenzel for a long time, while everyone, including himself, had been surprised by his odd work placement. Robin counted his lucky stars each day. Robin loved his job as an assistant in the book hold. Books from throughout the centuries had been collected and preserved here, so that as technological advancements increased, books would not disappear. A world without books, after all, would be a boring world. How could you explore different worlds and eventualities if there were no books to read about them or stories to tell? Creativity was important and rare these days and creatures like Dr. Wenzel believed it was their sacred duty to protect it at all costs from a world of increasing developing technology and overriding logic. Dr. Wenzel was the assigned chief book protector and was truly dedicated to his job. He treated every book as if it were a living being. He handled them gently and treated them with respect. He took the time to read them all and assigned them to their perfect place on the towering bookshelves within his hold. There were millions of books here. Dr. Wenzel's book hold was in a giant underground dome. All around the walls of the circular dome were bookshelves climbing high up towards the sky. And in every bookshelf, crammed into every cranny, there were books. Leather-bound books, hardcovers, paperbacks, small and thin, large and thick, classics, adventures, mystery, comedy. The list could go on. You could find a book to fulfill any purpose. Every book is unique, Dr. Wenzel would say as he made his way up the stepladder to place a new book on its rightful shelf. The stepladder has ascended incredibly high. If Robin climbed high enough to the top shelf of the dome, he could almost reach out and stick his hand through the large hole in the ceiling that allowed the moonlight to trickle in and down to the ground far below. It was this moonlight and a great number of candles that dimly lit up the book hole. If it weren't for their assistance, the place would be in complete darkness. Nobody else was allowed in the book hold except for Dr. Wenzel and his assistants. It was a great privilege to work alongside the wise old mouse. He had high standards and didn't welcome people into the hold often. So when Robin had been assigned to assist Dr. Wenzel, it had been a big deal. One evening, 
Robin was busy recording the arrival of a box of new books when Dr. Wenzel, out of the blue, called him over. Dr. Wenzel kept to himself most of the time and rarely spoke to Robin unless it was to do with his work. Dr. Wenzel was stood in the centre of the dome on top of the podium he had created out of books a long time ago. Broken books and duplicates acted as steps in a winding staircase to climb higher and higher to the top of the podium, where Dr. Wenzel would regularly stand, reading from a giant ancient book that lay open on the top. The pages of the ancient book were bigger than Robin or Dr. Wenzel themselves. It was the largest book Robin had ever seen. Nobody was allowed to read the book or climb up to the podium except Dr. Wenzel. The pages of the ancient book were top secret and the pages were so delicate that they could tear between the clumsy fingers of an absent-minded reader. Robin reached the bottom of the podium, called up to Dr. Wenzel. He wasn't allowed to stand on the podium normally, but Dr. Wenzel ushered him up. Robin's heart fluttered with anticipation as he carefully started to climb the makeshift stairs. It felt strange to be standing on the covers of the very things they were meant to be preserving and protecting. Robin felt the pages crunch together under his feet and he caught his balance a few times as he stumbled his way up the rickety steps. Eventually, he found himself at the top of the podium by Dr. Wenzel's side looking down on the pages of the ancient book. The moonlight streaming in from the hole in the ceiling fell upon the pages, lighting them for Robin to see clearly. It was fascinating seeing the ancient book up close. Across the open pages appeared to be a lost ancient language that Robin didn't recognise. And on the left-hand page, there was a large circular symbol surrounding the outline of a human body. Robin looked at Dr. Wenzel with a quizzical look. Where would you like to go? Dr. Wenzel asked out of the blue. What do you mean, doctor? Robin questioned, puzzled by this random open-ended question. The old mouse looked to his side, straight at Robin. There was a slight hint of mischief twinkling in his eye. If you could go anywhere, to any world, where would you want to go? He expanded on the odd question. Robin smiled at the spontaneity of the old mouse. He never failed to surprise him. Even though most of the time Dr. Wenzel acted very serious and kept to himself, he would sometimes come out with funny little quirks that would surprise Robin, like this strange question. Robin thought about his answer. If I could go anywhere I don't think I could pick, he began. I would want to see everything. I'd long to go under the sea, into outer space, journey to a place where I could have magical powers, or fly on the back of horses through the air. If I could go to any world, I'd want to go to the mall. Dr. Wenzel smiled at Robin's answer and raised an eyebrow. He tapped the giant book in front of him three times with his staff. 
And all of a sudden, glimmering light began to shine outwards from its pages. Robin's mouth fell open in awe as he watched the ancient book come to life. Beams of light radiated out of the pages and into the air. Swirls of shimmering gold light twirled and coiled in mid-air, and bright white orbs swirled in circles above the opened pages. Was this giant book magical all this time? No wonder Dr. Wendell was so strict about who could read its pages. He was protecting much more than just ordinary books. How about you start with just one of those worlds? Dr. Wenzel chortled with glee as he watched Robin's mesmerized face take in the magical surprise. Dr. Wenzel explained to Robin that this magical book was a passage between worlds. With the magic of the book, he could go to any world he desired. Robin could hardly believe what he was hearing. Dr. Wenzel hovered his staff above the glowing magical book, and it began to emanate with a dazzling, glittering glow. Are you ready? Dr. Wenzel asked with a sly grin. Robin stepped up and leaned forward to take a closer look. As he neared the book, he found himself becoming overwhelmed with a feeling of drowsiness. His eyes began to close, and all of his muscles felt loose in his body. His eyes shut completely, and he felt his body lift up off of the ground and float up into the air. Streams of gold light shot up around him, twirling him slowly in mid-air as orbs of bright white light waltzed around him. Robin felt peaceful and safe as the magic of the ancient book wrapped him in its mystical embrace. He felt as if his whole body was gently melting away and rippling like water. He felt completely serene. He felt his body grow warmer, like he was floating in a pool of water. He slowly flapped his arms up and down, up and down, up and down, as if he were paddling in mid-air. His feet still floated above the ground, and as he softly paddled his feet to and fro, it seemed as if he was pushing against a soft force. It almost felt as if he were treading water. Robin took a moment to look around, and couldn't believe his eyes. He was underwater. Robin was no longer in the book hold with Dr. Wenzel, but floating in the middle of the deep blue sea. Robin laughed and gazed around him at the spectacular underwater scene. He could breathe just like the fish, and his body felt light and smooth as it glided through the water with ease. He moved so easily, it was as if he had been living underwater all of his life. Every time he took a deep breath in and breathed out, bubbles would spurt up into the water in brilliant shapes. Robin took a few moments to simply breathe in and breathe out the bubbles. He watched them glisten and reflect the colours of this underwater world. He breathed in and breathed out, 
following the bubbles with his eyes as they rose up higher and higher until they pop. Robin appeared to be floating above some sort of underwater woodland pathway. There were tall, towering, windy trees on either side of him, leaving an open pathway down the middle. The sandy path led off into the distance, further than he could see. He could see the sun shining up above the surface of the water, lighting up the watery forest below. He could swim to the top to see what was up there, but he didn't want to. He wanted to find out what was down here a lot more. Robin began treading water and made his way along the path. The surface above him was a bright, phosphorant blue that cast lighter blue shadows on the white, sandy ground. The tree trunks were a deep purple colour, and the pink haze wafted around the bases of the trees like mist. It was an ethereal scene, and Robin felt elated with eagerness to discover more. Robin had always had an adventurous spirit, but he had never expected that he would get to live out his dreams of being an explorer. When he had been assigned to Dr. Wenzel's book called for work, all those years ago, it had seemed that he would simply live vicariously through the stories in the books they stored. But here he was, on an adventure provided by a magical book he never knew existed. In the distance, Robin suddenly noticed a figure walking towards him. It was a human figure, similar to his height. As the figure floated closer, he could see that it was a girl. She glided with ease, her long blue hair hovering around and behind her as she moved through the water. She wore a simple purple dress and was barefoot. She smiled at Robin and spoke. Welcome, young man. What brings you to these parts? Now that the girl was up close, Robin could see that she was only part human. Her fingers and toes were webbed for ease of movement through the water. Her skin was pale with a silvery tinge, suggesting she had some magic within her. And she had small gills on either side of her neck, allowing her to breathe underwater. Robin tentatively touched the side of his neck to see whether he had adapted to this subaquatic world. However, there was nothing there. The book's magic must have given him protection when it sent him here. Robin gazed into the girl's large, dark eyes and introduced himself explaining how he had come to be here. The girl seemed impressed, but not particularly surprised. So you're a traveller of time and space, she remarked with a smile. Well then, I must show you around. You've come to a very special place on your travels. With that, She turned around and started to lead the way down the path in the direction she came from. Robin followed behind, dutifully. I'm Alora. She introduced herself in her soothing voice. I'm so excited that you're here. I've always longed to meet a time and space traveller. 
He will love our world. The pair walked down through the trees, and Robin felt a gentle pull onwards, as if the space around them was drawing him near to something special. His body had never felt more relaxed than it did right now, held up by the water, with nothing required of him, except to let it take him where it wished. He started to notice a distant sound. It sounded like humming or singing without words. The melody was subtle, but the tone was alluring and comforting. Robin closed his eyes to appreciate the quiet music. Look, he heard Alora whisper eagerly. Above their heads, drifting through the gaps in the trees, were three large whales. They moved gracefully as they hovered close to the water surface. It was they that were quietly singing. It was whale song that Robin could hear. He stopped to take it all in, and Alora stood by his side, proudly watching the whales wind through the trees. Robin couldn't help but admire such magnificent, elegant creatures. It felt impossible to be stood this close to them in their own world. But here he was, experiencing the seemingly impossible. Laura urged him on, and they continued their journey down the path, with the whales drifting overhead. Eventually, the pair came to the end of the path, and the trees disappeared, leaving an open space in front of them. But the open space was far from empty. In fact, It was brimming with spectacular life. Robin looked out into the open vast ocean, where a floating island bobbed in front of him. The island was secured to the bottom of the ocean floor by a giant anchor and chain that attached to the island's rocky base. On top of the floating island was what appeared to be a giant castle. A long stone wall encircled the entire castle with a single drawbridge to enter inside, guarded by two giant seahorses. Numerous towers protruded high up above the castle walls, with huge seashells acting as the roof. Many little windows shone with glowing blue light from deep inside, suggesting that there was life within the castle walls. Many different coloured fish, jellyfish and dolphins swam freely by in the great open water. Welcome to Atlantis, Elora announced proudly. She held Robin's hand and began to swim out towards the castle. Robin's eyes grew wide with excitement. He couldn't believe he was in the kingdom of Atlantis. He had heard many stories about the legendary lost underwater kingdom, but he had never believed it to be real. Yet here he was, swimming towards the open gate to the kingdom. Robin had read so much about Atlantis as a young child. He had read that it was a great civilization with supreme power and technological advancements. But one night it fell into the sea and was lost forever. Yet here it was, 
before his very eyes. As Alora reached the open gate, the seahorses bowed their heads to her and allowed them both passage inside. The bright blue light softened as they entered and they began swimming down a long corridor. The current picked up and gently carried them both along. Robin lay back and relaxed as the current transported them down the tunnel. He looked to her Laura, who was lying back with her eyes closed. She looked totally blissful as she floated through the water. Robin closed his eyes too, to enjoy the moment. He felt so peaceful. He could barely feel his body anymore as he let go of all control. Eventually, they came to a gentle stop and began to float in mid-air again. Robin and Dolora looked around to find they were now within the castle grounds. They had landed in a giant regal hall. There was a chandelier hanging from the glass ceiling, made of shimmering crystals. Different colours reflected off the crystalline edges of the chandelier, casting streaks of light into the air. In the centre of the chandelier was a large blue diamond that shone with radiant blue light. Robin's eyes reflected with the incandescent light. He felt completely mesmerised. Dolora smiled when she saw the expression on his face. He was in complete awe. In the centre of the Grand Hall was a large trickling waterfall. The water lightly tumbled over boulders and lustrous green plants to culminate in a relaxing pool at the bottom that sparkled with the reflection of the blue diamond hanging above. There were other Atlanteans frolicking in the water or resting by the side. This must be the centre of the kingdom, Robin assumed. Climbing up the walls were multiple balconies, where Atlanteans perched and waved to friends. There was no need for staircases. After all, everybody swam around to get places. It was as if everyone was flying through the air. In fact, They were simply riding the waves. Come, Laura beckoned him as she swam out into the grand hall. Robin followed her as she guided him around the kingdom of Atlantis. It was totally different to his world. While in his world, everybody had a job to do and worked hard to do it. It seemed as though in Atlantis, people didn't have to do much except relax and enjoy the beauty of their surroundings. All the Atlanteans seemed happy and carefree. Laura led him from the Great Hall and into other stunning locations within the Kingdom Grounds. Everywhere felt open and light, with a breathtaking water feature in each area. There were many colourful plants and lots of beautiful coral decorating the walls and grounds. It was like the Atlanteans had taken all the beauties of the ocean and brought them here to enjoy for themselves. There was a consistent soft jingling sound everywhere, as though magic was in the air. Laura led Robin out into an outdoor courtyard. There was a lineup of giant seahorses to their right, wearing saddles on their backs, 
tightened reins around their snouts. Laura hopped onto the back of one of the sea creatures and urged Robin to join her. He climbed up onto the back of the seahorse next to her and together they rode off up and out of the kingdom. Robin laughed with delight as the seahorse raced through the waters. The force of water pressure seemed non-existent as they rode around at top speeds. Laura and Robin raced each other to see whose seahorse could swim the fastest, overtaking each other at different points and teasing each other whenever one of them overtook. Robin hadn't had so much fun in a long time. Ever since he had begun working in the bookhold, he had abandoned his childhood and focused on doing a good job to serve his world and make everyone proud of him. It felt freeing to just be himself and play like a child again. After a while, they both started to feel exhausted from all the fun and rode their seahorses back to the kingdom. Robin was used to a long day of hard work, but he felt even more tired from having fun. He had spent all of his energy on the excitement of this unexpected adventure. Parked up the seahorse he had ridden and patted it on the head gratefully. He turned around to face Alora and noticed a door in the middle of the courtyard. He hadn't seen it there before, and it was very bizarre that it was standing alone in the courtyard with no walls on either side. After a moment of puzzlement, Robin realised what the door must be. It must be a door for him. Perhaps the magic book was calling him back. Or maybe it was ushering him onwards to another world. He didn't know what lay in store for him next but he did know that it was his cue to leave Atlantis. He turned to Alora and thanked her for her kindness and friendship. She looked disappointed that he was leaving so soon. Will you come back? She asked, hopefully. I hope so, Robin replied, genuinely wishing that he would be able to return. Robin bade Laura farewell, turned back to the mysterious door, and walked towards it. The door was twice the height of Robin, and towered above him proudly. The wood was a faded purple, and Robin could see that the planks had splintered and frayed over time. A rusty bulbous bronze door handle protruded out to the right-hand side, and Robin placed his hand upon it. With a gentle twist, he unlocked the door and pushed it open. Robin squinted as a flash of light beamed from within the door frame, and just as soon as Robin had pushed the door open in Atlantis, found himself standing back next to Dr. Wenzel in the book hold. Robin gasped and looked around at his familiar surroundings, not quite sure whether to believe what had just happened. Yet, when he looked at Dr. Wenzel's face coated in such glee, he knew it must have been real. So, young Robin, how was your first adventure today? Dr. Wenzel pried aloofly. 
Robin excitedly described to Dr. Wenzel the underwater forest, the city of Atlantis, and his new friend Delora. He spoke more animatedly than he ever had in his life. Robin's existence so far had been pretty standard, so this out-of-world experience had blown his mind. Dr. Wenzel listened to him smugly and nodded his head, as if he had heard it all before. He was clearly pleased with himself. Well, that does sound like quite a spectacular place. Maybe I'll come with you next time, Dr. Wenzel commented as he flicked to the next page of the giant ancient book. Robin thanked Dr. Wenzel profusely for sharing the book's secret magic with him. Nobody would ever believe what had happened, and Dr. Wenzel made Robin promise not to tell a soul of his adventure. Robin was slightly disappointed that his time in the city of Atlantis had to remain a secret, but he understood why. If everyone found out that the book was magical, then it would be taken advantage of, or perhaps even taken away. It was their secret, and they had to protect it. Robin eagerly tried to glance over Dr. Wenzel's shoulder to the next page of the book. But it was no use. He couldn't understand a single word or symbol on the page. I wish that adventure never had to end. Robin sighed longingly. Dr. Wenzel turned and tapped the side of his nose knowingly. If one adventure doesn't end, then how will you ever have time for anything else? Dr. Wenzel said wisely. He tapped the page of the magic book with his staff three times, and swirls of light began to cascade off the pages once more. That was just the start, Dr. Wenzel announced in a hushed tone watching the swirling beams of golden light begin. Where would you like to go next? 